today, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be learning about different pollinators and some of the different issues that are causing those uh, reductions in numbers. So we're going to talk about different ways that you guys can help pollinators in your own environments. So for those of us that have just joined, just one last reminder before we get going, if you can take a minute and please let me know what country or city you're joining us from just by typing it next to your name. Okay, and we are going to go ahead and get started. So first off, I would like to begin with a land acknowledgement. So I am joining you guys from Treaty 6 territory. This is a traditional meeting grounds, gathering place and traveling route to the Cree, Suto, Blackfoot, Métis, Diné, and Nakota Sioux. I would like to also acknowledge the Indigenous peoples of all of the lands that we're on today. While we're meeting on a virtual platform, it's good to take a moment to acknowledge the importance of all of the lands that all of you guys call home. Because whether you're joining us from here in Treaty 6 territory or from across the ocean, hi to our friends in India, we all have a connection to the lands that we live on through the food that we eat and the products that we buy. Today, we're going to learn a deeper connection that pollinators have not only to the land, but on many different aspects of our everyday lives. So just to do a quick little introduction of everybody. We have a lot of different schools joining us today. So a lot of the time I like to introduce every single school that's gonna be joining us. You guys can probably tell we've got quite a list. So I think I'll just do a little overview. Um, we have schools joining us from across Canada. We've got schools from British Columbia, Alberta, New Brunswick, uh, Manitoba, Ontario. So we've got a lot of different schools um, and home schools from across Canada. We also have schools joining us from India, the Philippines, Philippines, Trinidad, the United States. So we have so many different people from so many different areas across the planet, which is awesome because we all have very different pollinators in all different areas of the world. So we're going to get a good idea of different pollinators that we have across the globe. So welcome to everybody on the list. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you guys are just as excited as I am to learn about pollinators and learn how we can help them out. So what we're going to be going over today, we have a wonderful guest speaker, Inese, joining us from the Canadian Wildlife Federation. She has a wonderful presentation set up for you guys, and it's very interactive. So what I'm going to ask you guys to do is during the presentation, if you would like to share an idea, you have two options. So the first thing you can do if you would like to share an idea is you can use your little raise hand emoji. So at the bottom of your screen, you can click on that little button to raise your hand. And then I'll know that you have something to share and I can call on you, okay? The other great option that you have is to type it in the chat. So I've already seen quite a few of us have been sharing our ideas in the chat. We've got all of us saying hello from all of these different areas. We've got friends from Treaty 7, New Brunswick, Ontario, British Columbia. So welcome, welcome. Awesome that you guys can use the chat. Make sure you use that lots and answer all of Inese's questions today because she's got lots of great ones. So without further ado, I would love to welcome our guest speaker, Inese Baye. So she is the education manager, sorry, manager for the gardening programs at the Canadian Wildlife Federation. She has experience in outdoor experiential learning and is passionate about connecting children and youth to nature. Now I know she has an amazing presentation to share with you guys today. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to her so she can go ahead and get started. Welcome Inese. Hi, thank you, Rebecca. Thank you for having me. And I'm really excited to be here to chat with all of you. So I'm just going to share my screen in a moment. Um, so I'm just going to wait. Rebecca, have you given me the permission to share? Yeah, it should be able to still work, I think, if you try to share it like we had it going before. If you can't get yours to work, I can also always um, pop it up on my screen as well. Um, yeah, I, I just clicked on the share button, but asking me for asking me some questions. Oh, yeah, sure. You can share from your end or we can just wait a little bit. Okay, yeah, I don't I know it kind of gave you that weird question last time. I don't know how we kind of got around that one. I can I'll I'll pop it up on my screen so we can all see it. And then you can kind of just let me know when you're ready to go through the slides and I'll I'll advance them for you if that works. Okay. Um, oh, now mine's kind of being a bit weird. Hold on one sec. Okay. This should work. Let me know if you guys are able to see my slides. 
Are we able yes. to see them? All right. So Anisi, you can go ahead and let me know when you're ready to go to the next slide and I'll advance them for you. Okay. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, so hi, everyone. Um, this is Inese, and um, I work with the Canadian Wildlife Federation. I'm based in Ottawa. Um, just to, I'm going to talk a little bit about CWF. Can we make a next slide, please? So at uh, the Canadian Wildlife Federation, we um, do a lot of fun things for wildlife. We help protect whales, bats, pollinators. We do a lot of fun things for the environment. We have a lot of programs for children and youth, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm just going to play a little game with you guys and talk about, you know, the butterfly poster. So how many butterflies can you spot here? I know so you guys want, you can type it in the chat. You can hold up how many fingers you think you see butterflies in this picture. Okay, one, two, or three, let me know. Two, oh, great, okay. Seven, hmm, that's a good one. Three, okay, five, okay, so three, number three, we have three butterflies in this poster. So we're gonna learn a little bit about butterflies as we go ahead. Um, so what are we going to talk today? We're going to learn about pollinators. We're going to learn about why they are important. We're going to meet some of Canada's pollinators, what challenges they face across you know, Canada and around the world, and how can you help pollinators in your schools? Great. So I have a question for you guys. What is a pollinator? And if you think you might know what a pollinator is, you can let us know. I see LP Brandt, they maybe are raising their hand there. I think they might know what a pollinator is. Great. Pollinators make honey. Honey, Matthew thinks they make honey. Great, yes, yes, we have honey bees. Thank you. Yeah, and I see Stephanie Oaks, uh, they say that living things that help pollen travel from one flower to another. And Javi and Noah say that it's an animal that spreads pollen to help flowers. Great, those are beautiful questions, beautiful answers. So pollinators, as you already said, are insects or animals that transfer pollen from one flower to another. So what is pollen? Like pollen are little substance um, that help produce fruit and seeds. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about pollination so that you can have a better understanding why pollinators move bees, move pollen and nectar. So pollination is a process when a flower visits, when the pollen visits a flower, they get nectar and pollen. And as they travel to another flower, they take along with them all the pollens on their body and they leave them with the next flower. As you can see in this slide, you can see the little bee on a flower and the bee is moving to the next flower and they have, um, you know, little, po little pollens all over their body and they also go into the third flower. And as you can see, so as they move around, they drop little pollens, the little grains across the flowers. So can we... All right, I have another question. Why do you think these animals visit flowers? Yeah, but don't you think in cap? We think, and remember guys, if you click your little raise hand emoji, just like Dravianch has done there, I can see your little icon that you might have an answer. Anybody else have an idea of why you think a pollinator might want to do all of this work? Great, that's a good one to get food. Wow, that's good. So bring back to the hive, for sure. That's another good one to get nectar, yes. All right, so uh, as you have said, as we go to the next slide, pollinators um, you know, visit flowers to get food for themselves as well as their young. So they get nectar, which I said is the powdery substance for food 
um, polynamine, which is a powdery substance for food, and nectar, which is like apple juice. You no, know? it's a sugary thing, very sweet in the flower that a lot of pollinators love and they get a lot of energy to move around. Okay, so why are pollinators so important? Do you guys know why they're important? I can see a lot of hands. Yeah, I, LP Brand, you guys, I think, have another idea again, if you guys wanted to share. Yes. We wouldn't have food. Great. Great answers are coming in. Great answers. Yeah, lots of answers in the chat. So plants won't be able to grow. We won't have food. They need it for production. production. Great. Yeah, so as we move to the next slide, we can see that, you know, pollinate, pollinators are quite important for a variety of reasons. So the first one is they help, you know, provide the delicious food that we eat. So a lot of fruits like apples, cherries, strawberries, blueberries, bananas, all of those beautiful things are thanks to pollinators. So if we don't have pollinators, oh my gosh, we wouldn't have apples or strawberries. I can't imagine that. Um, another important reason is that, you know, they help produce seeds and fruits. They also help our ecosystems with diversity of plants and they contribute a lot to the Canadian economy. So assuming we have to import all of the food we eat from across the world, you know how much that is gonna be? But thankfully we have pollinators in Canada that help produce some of those fruits and vegetables. So as we continue, okay, I have a sweet tooth. I don't know about you guys, but true or false, do you think we have chocolate thanks to pollinators? Do you think, you know, pollinators help um, pollinate the cocoa tree? True, yes, 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 yes. Oh yeah, you guys <laughs> knew this one. <laughs> yes. True, so, true, true, true. Our chat true, is just true. full of truths. <laughs> oh, great, 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 great. Yes, yeah, so the meat fly helps to pollinate the cocoa tree. And I can't also imagine a world without chocolate. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. So as I said, we can't imagine a world without pollinators. We wouldn't have, you know, plants. We wouldn't have fruits and vegetables. We would run out of, you know, woods, papers. Um, a lot of things might go wrong if we don't have pollinators and we actually need them to survive. So back to Canada, can you guess how many types of pollinators are in Canada? So how many different types? So a little bit different than our B question at the start. How many different types of pollinators do you think we have? Javianche, I see that you think there's 800 of them. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> a lot. LP five. Brand says four to five. Okay. All right. So let me give you a clue. Do we want to stick between one and seven? So do we have one pollinator? Do we have two? Do we have four? Do we have six types of pollinators? Five? Seven? Does anybody think we have seven? Six? A lot okay. of fives and sixes. Okay, so as we go on, so we have seven kinds of pollinators in Canada. We have bees, flies, wasps, butterflies, moths, beetles, and hummingbirds. So we're gonna learn a little bit about them as we continue. Okay, so which of these pollinators do you think it's quite important? You know, out of the seven that I mentioned, do you think bees are more important? Do you think flies, butterflies, or beetles? Which one do you think is more important? Oh, great, yeah. Yeah, we so our all chat of them. says they're all important, <laughs> yep. Bees, okay. Okay, most bees, all right. So yes, you know, all of our pollinators are quite important, but you know, the principal pollinator are bees. Um, do you know why? 
because they have a lot of hair on their bodies. They have like this little bristle hair and then they can collect a lot of pollen as they move from flower to flower. So if you think bees are cool, can you give me a thumbs up? Okay, great. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of bees in Canada are, are solitary bees, right? And um, they like to nest and get food for their young. So they don't sting as much as the social bees. I know a lot of people might be a little scared about bees, but it's just something to know that, you know, the bees in Canada are solitary bees and um, they tend to stay, you know, along with your young ones. Okay, so... In Canada, we have 900 species of native bees. That's quite a lot, right? And bees, they collect pollen differently. So as we're gonna see later on in the slides, like, you know, they can take, collect pollen on their legs or on their abdomen. Bees, they like, you know, a variety of flowers. They are very active during the day. And, you know, they love something sweet and minty. Let me show you the next slide. And um, yes, yeah, so the mining bee. What do you guys think about this bee? The mining bee. So the mining bee is among the first bees to be active. Okay, yeah, response. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can go ahead and share. Ma'am, I think that they are. I think they are a very special species because they are the most active species. Great, that's true. That's true. Correct. Yeah. So they are among the very first to become active in the spring, right? So spring is just a few weeks away, a few months, and you're gonna see the mining bee. You know, among the very first pollinators to be out. So isn't that cool? Um. So they, they actually sting, but their stings are not enough to puncture the human skin. And they carry food differently. As you can see this bee in the slide, it looks as if it's carrying pollen under its armpit, but you know, it's, it's, just, it's just funny and cool. Um, the next bee is the mason bee. So the mason bee is actually very important to have pollinate our apples. So if you love apples, you're gonna say a big thank you to the mason bee. <laughs> so, and mason bees, you know, they like to um, nest in holes and wooden blocks. So if you have, you know, these around your schools or something, you might find mason bees nesting in some of these uh, artificial um, nesting uh, materials. So yes, and the last bee I'm gonna talk about, the bumblebee. The bumblebees are you know, quite popular in Canada. They are large, um, they help pollinate tomatoes and strawberries. Um, also they are the, you know, among the first to be out in the spring and also the last in the fall. Um, and they love to eat. So they can actually visit 10 to 18 flowers in a minute. Can you imagine that? So they go, I can't imagine how fast they are. So moving on to wasps. Oh my gosh. I know sometimes when we're having, you know, like picnics at the park and we see a wasp coming around, like, you know, we, we kind of freak out. But wasps are very important, right? They help, um, they help with pest control. Um, and they're also very good at collecting pollen on their legs and they can sting. Yes, they can sting when they feel that, you know, you're coming you know, to, um, to disturb them or something. Um, so moving on to the next pollinator, flies. Do you think flies are cool? If you think flies are cool, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I need to see those hands up or down. Flies, up, up. <laughs> In between, yes, I know, right? <laughs> so flies, um, you know, they collect food differently. They love collecting food on their heads. Um, they are attracted to, you know, odor and, you know, smell like rotten meat. So if you put something very stinky, you know, around, you can see like flies coming around there to kind of, you know, take some nutrients from whatever you have that is, you know, stinking or smelling. And um, they like white or pink flowers. So the next pollinator, 
are butterflies. Do you think butterflies are cool? You can give me a thumbs up. Yeah. Oh, yeah they yes. love butterflies. <laughs> Everybody loves butterflies. I do. They're so beautiful. And so this particular butterfly is a monarch. And the monarch butterfly, they feed on all sorts of flowers. And, you know, they like flowers that are, you know, open or deep. And they have, you know, a long tongue so they can drink, um, um, get nectar for their nutrients. And did you know that butterflies travel all the way to Mexico, like the monarch butterfly? And they overwinter in Mexico? That's pretty far away. So we're going to learn a little bit about butterflies as we continue. Hummingbirds. Do you think hummingbirds are cool or not? Yeah, I love them. <laughs> so the hummingbirds is another pollinator in Canada. We have five species of hummingbirds in Canada, just five of them. And, you know, we said we had bees. Bees are over 800, but hummingbirds are just very few. They are the smallest of birds. They are very quick, they are bold, and they are skillful. Um, and they can eat all day. You know, they can eat all day. And they love to feed on, you know, nectar, as well as insects or spiders, uh, which gives them nutrients. Also, another cool thing about hummingbird is that they can flap their wings 55 to 75 times per second. So I can imagine doing my wings like this 55 times in a second. That's quite a lot. So that's a cool thing to know about hummingbird. Woohoo! <laughs> Great. So the next pollinator, oh, beetle. Beetle um, is another pollinator in Canada. They love spicy and sweet and fermented scents. So if you have flowers, you know, in your schools that are spicy or sweet, um, beetles would really love to, you know, go there. And the last pollinator, I guess, yes, the moth. Oh, so if you think if you think moths are cool, can you give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Do you like moths? Ish, ish, ish. Yeah. So, you know, the hummingbird clearing moth are nocturnal. So they actually function during the day and night. And they love, you know, as you can see in the pictures, they love, you know, flowers that are deep. Um, they love a variety of flowers. And sometimes they look like the hummingbirds, right? Sometimes they are mistaken for the other bird that we saw in the other slide. As we go on. Okay, so all of these pollinators are quite important and they are so beautiful. They help, you know, produce a lot of food and vegetables. They help our ecosystems, but they are declining. Do you know why the pollinators are declining? Do you know why the numbers are reducing every day? Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead. So one, yeah, pesticides. Oh, sorry. Yeah, let's go there back. <laughs> yeah, pesticide, habitat loss. Great, those are great answers. So when we have, you know, when we build a lot of infrastructures in our society, we are taking away the food that the pollinators need. Um, we are taking away the plants, the plants and the flowers and the trees, and they don't have enough food as they used to. And also, um, climate change, as you know, is something going on around the world. So due to the climate change, the pollinators um, don't have enough food that they need. Um, sometimes when they come out in the winter or in the fall, the plants are no longer there. And this is as a result of you know, the climate change and global warming. Great, intensive agriculture. Great, that's another interesting one. Yeah, I also um, see an interesting comment here, non-native insects. So could you tell us a little bit, why would non-native insects affect them so much? 
So non-native insects are insects that are not, as, you, as the name implies, are not in Canada, right? And also um, they, um, you know, eat also from the plants and flowers. And our native pollinators also don't have enough food, right? So everyone is trying to get something for themselves. And when we have non-native plants that have, um, that uh, are introduced from abroad, they don't have the right nutrients for, you know, Canada's pollinators. Great, awesome. Great. So, but there is hope. How can we help pollinators? In your school, at home? What do you think we can do? I can see some hands up. We got, let's, do we want to go to LP Brandt first, if you guys have some ideas? We are, as a school, all three of our classes have a pollinator garden. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Yes. Indra Vyanch? Yes, ma'am. Ma ma the first, it's the main point that we should plant more and more trees. Mm -hmm. uh, and ma'am, secondly, uh, reduce the uh, or eliminate the use of pet pesticides. And uh, ma'am, uh, we should create bee habitat. And uh, ma'am, we should also provide nectar for hummingbirds. Yeah, really? plant trees, provide nectar, have a habitat. And I think our friends in Calgary there also had their hands raised. Ma'am, this is the easier and co easiest point and the first main point that we should plant more and more trees. Definitely. That's good. So those and, are uh, mostly that flower producing plants. Great, yes. Does Thank anybody you. else have any ideas? Good, I know there's a couple in the chat here as well. A lot of us have um, school gardens, which is awesome. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit more later. Okay. And a lot of planting pollinator friendly gardens. Great, yes. Yeah. So as we go on to the next slide, um, your, your answers are correct. So. There are several ways that we can help pollinators. One is to plant, you know, have a pollinator garden and have flowers that are rich in nectar and pollen. So that when pollinators come, you know, to your garden, they have something to, to eat. And we also want to make sure that we have flowers that bloom from different seasons, right? So flowers that bloom in the springtime, in the summer months, and in the fall. So at all seasons, we have pollinators, you know, um, um, they have access to all of these good things. And as you can see that the pollinators are quite different in their shapes and sizes, right? And their feeding habits are quite different too. So some pollinators like flowers that are flat, some like flowers that, you know, look, um, that are a little bit narrow, like the hummingbirds. So we want to make sure that we have a diversity of flowers in our gardens, different shapes and sizes. And we also want to make sure that we have some native plants, right? So native plants are, are, are plants that have co-evolved with the wildlife in your area. So some plants have been in your school area or in your home environment, but 100 years or, you know, 400 years and the wildlife in those areas are quite familiar, you know, um, with the plants. So as we move on, another thing to um, consider when, you know, planting for pollinators is that, you know, you want to avoid plants that are invasive, right? You want to try as much as possible to have native plants that, you know, are from your local region. You also want to avoid plants that have pesticides. So pesticides, um, are hot, you know, the pollinators, when they go to the flowers and they eat from the you know, flowers, the pesticides can actually harm them. And also when the pollinators take food, you know, back to the nesting places, to the kids, to the young ones, you know, the young ones also get hot, you know, by taking from those flowers. And that means that we are hurting the next generation of pollinators. Also, pollinators don't only need flowers. Like butterflies, they need 
you know, a dump or a manure or, you know, a, a compost. They need a place where they can mud puddle. The butterflies in the screen, they are getting their nutrients as they, you know, mud puddle. Um, they get their nutrients from rotten fruits. So if you have an orange in the summer months, you know, an orange um, that you no longer want and you just put it out in your garden, you can see some butterflies going there. Yes. So butterflies love, um, they love to puddle in the water. Another thing is that, you know, pollinators need water. How many of you had water this morning? I have my water here. I have a cup of water. Yes, we all have our water bottles. Great. Oh yeah, I can see you showing me a water bottle. So, you know, pollinators as well, they need water, right? Um, also in the summer months, so you can have a patching stone in your garden and you can have a little stones. As you can see in this picture, there is a bee, you know, that just had some water and about leaving, right? So when you have, you know, water in your garden, you're providing the right nutrients for pollinators. And let's go to shelter. Why do you think pollinators need shelter? Why do you think pollinators need a place to live? Okay, I can see some hands up. Climate change, yes. Overwintering, yes. So these are great uh, answers. Protection, yes. So pollinators, you know, just like we do, I'm in my house and I need shelter for, you know, different reasons. So pollinators as well, they need a place to hide when the weather is really harsh. You know, maybe when there is a snowstorm or, or something, they need to hide um, from predators and they need to rest sometimes, you know, like the birds, the hummingbirds and all of them, they need, you know, to take a nap. Well, not all pollinators take naps, but you know, sometimes they just need to, to take a rest. And also to find, you know, food, Yes, okay, I can see the question, the answers coming in. Yeah, they try to stay safe. Shelter, yes, so we can provide shelter in our school gardens by um, having a diversity of plants, by having a diversity um, um, of plants. Uh, you can have grasses, you can have vines. You can also have a bee house. As you can see, a bee, a bee house there. You can have bee houses in your school garden. And when you have all of those, you are protecting pollinators. Another thing you wanna do for pollinators is that you want to make sure that your gardens are safe, right? You don't wanna have pesticides in your garden. You wanna use sustainable practices like you know, compost and also water conservation, you wanna put a rain barrel in your garden so that your garden is safe for pollinators. Wildlife in general are very important. So do you think that, you know, it is important that we protect wildlife in winter? Do you think we should care about animals in the winter? Do you think so? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so why? Why do you think we should care for animals in the winter? Oh, I see a couple of our schools are typing in their answers here. Oh, great. I'm sure the answers are going to be a little bit different in Canada versus our friends in the <laughs> Philippines. To stay warm and safe, yes. So a lot of our wildlife, you know, uh, it's in, in the winter month, it's really hard for them to survive. It's hard for them to find their food. Um, so it's important that we have uh, um, uh, food for the wildlife in the winter. We want to have bed feeders in our garden, in your school garden, so that we can have the right nutrients for wildlife. And wildlife, they need to stay, they need to stay warm and they also need the energy. And for them to stay warm, they need to eat and have a lot of energy. 
So it's quite important that we think about wildlife in the winter months. Great, so as we move on. All right, so now we've come to the end of our presentation. And I would like to know, what do you think about all of the pollinators we spoke about? So we spoke about hummingbirds, we spoke about the monarch butterfly, bees, beetle. Which pollinator do you think you are? Which of the pollinators do you like the most and why? And we probably have a time for a few of you guys to share. So I really want you to think about all the things you learned about these pollinators. And then maybe we can call on a few of you guys to let us know which one you would choose and why. Okay. I know Dravyansh, you're probably ready to go already. So I'll go ahead and let you share yours first. Ma'am, because ma'am, butterflies are great for uh, our gardens and ma'am, uh, they are also attracted to bright flowers and uh, need uh, uh, feed and nectar. Hey, so you think you'd be a butterfly? Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's a good one. Does anybody else have any ideas of what pollinator they want to be? They are very, very colorful and we also wear uh, daily colorful clothes. Yep, very colorful. IP Brand, do you guys have anybody that wants to share on the microphone which pollinator they would like to be? I want to be a bee. A bee? Awesome. Great. Do you want to tell me why? I like the color yellow and black. Oh, it's so cool. Great. All right, a couple oh, of hands. Got, yeah, Chris here has his hand up. <laughs> I like the most as it is the most important pollinator and we get honey from it and we also get wax from it. Cool, do we have other answers in the chat? No. Yeah, I see blue water. Yeah, you guys are ready to go. We have Trent here to share. I want to be a wasp because I think that they are pretty cool because they are bigger than bees. Oh, yeah. yeah. Scary. <laughs> One. Okay, do I see any other hands up here? Oh, I see somebody's ready here in Calgary, Miss Physics class. All right. I want to be a, uh, a hummingbird because because I want to flap my wings 55 seconds, 55 times per second. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and I see while we're just waiting, if you guys have a few more that want to share, we have time for a few more of you to come up to the microphone if you'd like to. Um, and while we're just waiting to get a couple more people up, uh, Noah and Zavi say that they would like to be a hummingbird, or sorry, Zavi wants to be a hummingbird because they're cute, but they love them all. Um, and Mason in Mrs. Oak's class says that he likes the bee because it's the Mason bee. That's awesome. You already named after a pollinator. <laughs> okay, I see we have another friend in Blue Water Coast who would like to share. This is Tell. Tell's going to share. I'd like to be a hummingbird because one, I can beat my wings very fast. And two, I can um, eat like from bird feeders and yeah. Yeah, I don't know how many of you guys have hummingbird feeders at your house in the summer, but we always have hummingbird feeders at my house. I love watching them. Hey, Inese, what about you? Which pollinator would you pick? I know, I get that question a lot. So because um, I love good food, so I'm gonna go with hummingbirds. So hummingbirds are big eaters and they eat all day. Not that I eat all day, but I love it. <laughs> so I'll go with the hummingbird. <laughs> That's a good one. You guys, if I had to pick, I'm gonna have to pick the beetle because nobody picks the poor beetle. They're so cool looking. Nobody it was ever a fly, the right? Beetle. The hoverfly. No one picked the hoverfly. Yeah, or the hoverfly. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, last call. Does anybody else want to let us know what pollinator they are before we move on? I think I maybe see one more hand. Oh yeah, Kate. So we'll have one more from Blue Water and then maybe one more from this physics class and then that's all that we can fit in. I would be a hoverfly. Oh, good. Why is that so? Uh, Because they look cool. Oh yeah, they look cool. <laughs> okay. And our last one here. Okay. I want to be a beetle because they look really cool and I want to help them nature. Yeah, <laughs> they're really cool. And something cool about the beetle is that, you know, they've been in existence even before the bees. So they've been in existence over 100, 150 million years ago. But the bees are quite popular, you know. But that's a cool thing to know. Awesome. And the last one that I got in the chat here is Harmea would like to be a bee because they help the earth. Yes. So that's awesome. That's good. Wow. You guys are so amazing. And thank you so much for having me. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our program. If you would like to learn about, you know, bees, pollinators, and you want to help them in your school garden, you can sign up for the Canadian Wildlife Federation Wild Spaces Program. And we also provide plants to schools across Canada so that you can have you know, your garden set up in the spring for pollinators. Thank you so much and have a nice day. So, and I'll just throw in a couple of quick reminders as well before uh, we let everybody go. First off, I can pop this link in here. So if anybody is interested in that wild spaces program, um, your school actually uh, will receive free plants that they can plant. And I know a few of you guys already have um, school gardens going, so you can go ahead and add those to the school garden you already have. Uh, so if you might be interested in that, I just put the uh, link in the chat there. So this is just some information about it. Um, and then lastly, of course, a little reminder, if you guys loved learning about pollinators today, which I'm sure you did, we all, I'm sure, enjoyed learning about pollinators. We actually have a few other presentations from the Canadian Wildlife Federation uh, that we can kind of add to this series. So if you think you might be interested in learning about how to compost, um, I know Inese mentioned that some of our pollinators love composts. If you want to learn more about how you can start a compost at your school or at your home, we have our Scraps to Soil presentation on April 7th. And then finally, our wild spaces presentation, which actually has to do with that link that I shared with you. So if you guys have a great school garden or are you interested in starting a school garden, you can go ahead and join this presentation. So this wild spaces presentation is all about sharing and celebrating the school gardens that we have um, at our own schools or maybe getting some hints that you guys can go ahead and start your own school gardens at your school. So I'll leave that one up there for you in case you guys have um, or want to um, go ahead and join that one. And um, if the uh, QR code isn't working, I also just uh, pop the link into the chat there as well for you guys to sign up for those other ones. So I would like to once again, thank you very much Inese for joining us. We really appreciate um, this presentation. I sure definitely learned a lot. I um, love pollinators even more after this wonderful presentation. I hope you guys all did too. And thank you to everybody who joined us and thank you for sharing all your wonderful ideas and your uh, hour with us here at CGE. We really appreciate it. Okay, thank you so much guys. <laughs>